Now let's talk about what we need to do to understand where performance is coming from or going. So we're going to look at profiling OpenCL. So what do we expect from what we did? We've gone into our code and replaced our update call in C with the update CL call. And our update CL call went through all this work of creating the program, compiling it, moving the data over the GPU, executing on the GPU, and reading the results back. And here's the performance that we got before. We saw we were spending 80% of our time running the update. Now the question is, where do we end up with, what performance will we get when we switch this over to our GPU? And remember, our GPU is about 35 times faster than the single CPU core we were using before. So what speed up do we expect? Well, we expect update here to be 35 times faster. So this blue part should basically, we should lose almost all of it. And this is the speed we should have, the amount of time we should take overall. So roughly 80% of this should be, you know, infinitely faster, 35 times faster. So overall, we expect to be at five times faster when we run this. Now, let's take a look at what actually happens. So here's what we get. Here we can see we've offloaded stuff from OpenCL. So the first thing we notice is when we run OpenCL on the CPU, it is a little bit faster, just a little bit. And that's because OpenCL is going to use all of our CPU cores. So this is a little disconcerting. We've got four CPU cores and only running a teeny bit faster. Now look at what happened on the GPU here. So we ran on the GPU, which is 35 times faster, and our overall execution is only 25% better. So something's not working very well here. We need to understand why running on a 35 times faster device is only running 25% faster. So we need to do some better job of profiling here. All right, so how are we gonna get more detailed profiling? Well, we're gonna go in for all of our OpenCL commands here, and we're gonna add profiling stuff around it. So before we enqueue a read, we're gonna start a performance measurement and stop one after it. So we're putting a timer around the CL and Q read buffer, and we're gonna put a timer around everything, including CL finish, to find out what's going on here. Now, where do we expect to see most of our time going? So we've gone in and we're now putting in detailed measurements about all these operations here. Where do we expect to see most of our time? Well, here's what we see. We see that we're not spending any time in update. So no time in update. You can't even see it on the graph here, yet update is the big calculation we're doing. What we do see is we're spending almost all of our time in finish. In fact, we're spending time in finish and we're spending time compiling and that's all we're doing. So what's going on here? We're not seeing any time spent in update and we're seeing lots of time being spent in finish. So why is this happening? Well, Update is really not as fast that we don't see it. I mean, update's gonna be 35 times faster, so we should still see it on here somewhere. I mean, we're taking this chunk of time here and a 35th of that's still gonna be visible on the graph. Does CL finish take a long time to execute? Well, it, it doesn't do anything. I mean, CL finish is just waiting. Why should it take a long time to execute? Is OpenCL lying to us? It's pretty unlikely. The profiling is gonna be, you know, pretty accurate here. We're just timing how long it takes to do the commands. So that only leaves one option, that we're profiling the wrong thing. So if we are profiling the wrong thing, what is it that we're actually profiling? So to understand that, let's take a look at asynchronous execution. So in OpenCL, remember, we're enqueuing things. We're executing things asynchronously. And here's an example of this. We've got our CPU and our GPU over time, and the GPU has a command queue. That is, it's gonna have a buffer of commands it's gonna execute. So let's take a look at what our program is doing. We start off and we compile the code. Now when we compile the code on the CPU, we're gonna go and spend some time compiling. Then we're going to write data. But when we write data, the CPU doesn't actually do anything. It just creates a command, and this command is going to go right over to the GPU command queue. And so with it sitting in the GPU command queue, it's not going to take any time on the CPU to put it in the command queue. So then we're going to go in and queue the kernel, again, in the command queue. We're going to read the data in the command queue. These take very little time. This is basically instant. All we're doing is shoving things in these command queues. And you'll notice that we've shoved them in the command queue up here, but the GPU hasn't even started yet. Maybe it's busy doing something else. Now the last thing we do in our program is we wait. We call CL wait, and now it's just gonna sit here waiting. At some point in the future, the GPU is gonna wake up. It's gonna decide, ah, let's start executing those commands. We're gonna go ahead and write the data. Then we're gonna run our update kernel. And finally, we're gonna go ahead and read our data. So at this point, we're finally done, and now the wait will end. So what we did was we measured this. We measured the time the CPU was spending waiting. And that's why we saw so much time in CL finish here. We were waiting. We didn't measure what we wanted up here. We didn't measure the time the GPU was writing, the GPU was updating, or the GPU was reading, because those are all asynchronous. We just enqueued those in a command queue, and they happened at some point. We measured the time the CPU was waiting. And that's why we see so much time in CPU waiting. 
Okay, so OpenCL is asynchronous. We were just enqueuing things. So that happened basically immediately to enqueue it. CL finish spent so much time because it made OpenCL wait. And so we waited till everything was done, but it didn't tell us where we were actually spending our time. And there's a simple brute force solution to this. If we put in a finish everywhere, then OpenCL will be forced to finish the code before it goes on and we'll see how long each operation takes. Now, if you want to do this for real, you should use OpenCL profiling events, but we wanted to make it simple here, so we're just using the brute force approach. Okay, so let's do profiling that works. What are we going to do here? Well, we've got our enqueue read buffer, we've got our performance measurements around it, we're going to just stick in a CL finish. So that'll force the C program to stop here until the read buffer is done, so now our performance measurement is going to be accurate. 